Thank you. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. This was a really good opportunity for, uh, for me to be able to speak to Thunder Bay, considering this is where I'm from. And I was really excited about the opportunity to present to you what it's like to see my world, what it's like to live in a space which is much different than perhaps some of the industries that you see every day. And it's something that some of you may leave and say to yourself, wow, this guy is crazy. <laughs> this guy has a vision of the future that is science fiction. But I want you to realize today that science fiction is already here. And that everything I'm going to show you is something that's already popped up in your newsfeed. It's stuff that you've already scrolled by. And you may have dismissed it because it looks like science fiction. And it's going to be an interesting life to imagine what we have in the future. The automaton, an old mechanical machine. The mechanical man. The android. Since the dawn of time, man has been doing nothing but trying to innovate, invent, optimize, be more efficient, make ourselves better. Robots that are our friends. Robots that help us. Johnny Five. <laughs> Robots that protect us. What is a robot? Well, sure, these are robots. You go upstairs, you see some robots. They're mechanical, they move around, they do stuff. And that's what's great about robots, because they're entertaining. But they're much more than that. And I want you to remember this, because this is really important. This is the essence of technology. Robot is the thing. And I'm going to break down to you the hardware, the software, and what it actually does and where we're at. Okay? Give apt legs. Now, you may have seen my the talk uh, topic and thought, what does that mean? Don't worry, it doesn't mean that. <laughs> well, you have hardware, which is your computer. That's the thing you type with. That's your iPad. Then you have software. Software loads onto hardware. That's what makes the hardware do stuff. Now, the difference today with the miniaturization of computers and computing technology and the affordability has allowed us to have technology, microprocessors in our cars, on our watches, in our pockets, in our lives, everywhere, sending information to the cloud at all times, broadcasting everything that we do into giant databases of artificial intelligence, data analysis, everything that's necessary for computers and for organizations and corporations to know how to sell you red Nike shoes in Thunder Bay at the Intercity Mall. Johnny Five. Robots come in many different forms. Science fiction, movies, artificial intelligence. I'm sure some of you guys recognize that. HAL 9000, 2001 Space Odyssey. These are robots from Boston Dynamics. This is a robot that's made for military. Google, who owns Boston Dynamics, is actually selling off uh, Boston Dynamics right now after actually this video was, was, was uh, presented to the world. Oh, owner's cars, <laughs> Can anyone guess what that is? Put me back for Self driving me car. That is the Tesla. And I was. <laughs> it's an old lady in a Tesla who doesn't know what to expect. <laughs> we have uh, self driving cars on the road today. To some of you who are really surprised, um, I have friends who have self-driving cars. I've been in self-driving cars, and you can buy them, commercially available. Education robots. Robots come, such as I have out here, many different forms. You need to educate people in order to prepare for what's up and coming in the future. Nest thermostat, home automation. Many of you may be familiar with that. That's energy analysis. That's your, your kind of your social perspective of how you're living your life inside of your home and what you're doing and how you're using energy, et cetera. That's actually a robot. When you get one of those things, you turn your house into a robot. Now, it's not going to walk around and grow arms, but it's doing something. Your fitness, your Fitbit, any sort of monitoring system that's connecting to you is actually adjusting your life. It is showing you and presenting to you how many steps you've taken, making you make more steps. It's affecting how you live your life every day. That, again, is a robot. It is something that is actually affecting your life. It's a machine for the first time, for many of you in your life, where you just sit back and think to yourself, holy jeez, that actually is the reason why I do some of the things I do. Ooh, a robot? Facebook? How can that be? Well, what if I told you that the largest database of social information about all of you resides in Facebook? What if I told you that artificial intelligence is what actually drives your newsfeed. When you scroll, when you move around and, and in your newsfeed and you stop at things and scroll back up, hotspots, everything that they know, where you put your mouse cursor over, where you scroll down and scroll back up, that's all maintained and logged. And it adjusts what you see in your newsfeed. So think to yourself who you're sitting with, 
who your friends are right now and wonder, hey, why am I friends with this person? Because the artificial intelligence of Facebook may have manipulated and actually created your better off life. And of course, wearables. Uh, Apple Watch, many of you have some sort of technology as well where you're integrated with technology and you're integrated with your life through this. And of course, you add this all together and suddenly you have this landscape, robots. That's our world. But you're missing something. This is what I do. I don't drive cars into stuff, but that's my analogy. If you vision the robot industry as automobiles, for example, you have all these different automobiles. You have race cars, <laughs> you have uh, vans, minivans, Dodge caravans, all these different types of cars, delivery vehicles. Well, someone has to teach people how to drive these things, how to operate these things in the future. Because when you wake up tomorrow and robots are there, don't say I didn't warn you. So what would your robot do? If I had a robot that could do anything in the world, I would definitely take advantage of a diaper changing robot. Probably helping deliver stuff. Taking blood or checking somebody's temperature. Make me a cup of hot chocolate. Change guitar strings. You could play games with it. It could be my buddy to work out. Skyscraper window washer. Patrolling in case there's like any criminals around. We won't even have to go to school. We'll just send the robots there. When it comes to the future of robotics, there really are no limits. It's scary, isn't it? It's true. Hey DJ, yeah, do not forget to tell them not to fear me. Oh, right. The robots, they want, you know what? Maybe for this, I need a prop. I don't want you to think I'm too crazy. <laughs> Is there anything to fear? Yes, there is. And it's not the lack of education. It's not the lack of innovation. It's the fact that we're approaching a, p a point in society where technology is going to meet the capabilities of the human brain and the potential of robots and computers and artificial intelligence taking over innovation, taking over thought, and taking over the drive of what it takes to be human. And to some of you, in your lifetime. Let's start and take a look at what this means. Self-driving cars. Well. Actually, my head's a little hot. It's okay if I take this off for this part. Self-driving cars, Elon Musk at Recode, if any of you watched this the other day, uh, Elon Musk announced that his self-driving car is already available uh, for road testing. In two years, it'll be on the road. In three years, it'll be safetyed. And all it takes to be safetyed is for the, uh, for the car to be at least two, three, or four times safer than any of you, the way you drive. Now, I'm not here to judge. <laughs> However, I'll introduce this to you. The lady I showed you earlier, the grandmother behind the wheel, that's Tesla's autopilot. Tesla's autopilot currently has a statistic, which they had to put in rational perspective for you to be able to relate. You would have to drive for eight lifetimes in order to get in a car accident with autopilot. Artificial intelligence. Well, artificial intelligence is the software to the robot hardware. Okay, when people talk about robot software, the things that make these robots do what they do is the artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence, of course, investments, insurance, manufacturing, social media, etc. And that's where we are just today. Who is dealing with artificial intelligence? Well, D-Wave is the largest quantum computing company based out of Vancouver, actually. And their largest investor and first investor is Gold Goldman Sachs. Not because they see financial return investing into the computer, but because they need to be able to get a faster computer to process their data models for investments so they can replicate all of the great investors that they currently already have. So the Goldman Sachs current model takes the monitors, the algorithms of a particular investor, and then they can duplicate that in many, 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 many times. Microsoft. Microsoft recently announced that they're doing some spectacular things on artificial intelligence. Apple. Okay, if everyone has one in your pocket and you wonder what's going on there, Siri is a very great example and the next thing you're gonna see from Apple is gonna be interesting as well. IBM, now this is, this is the conversation that I always like to introduce to people because when some people say, put the tinfoil hat back on, where, what are you talking about here? It's because Watson was on Jeopardy and beat people and the world said, well that was great PR. No, that was us telling you to watch out, to prepare yourself for what's gonna happen. Google, Facebook, 
OpenAI, Elon Musk's new open venture of artificial intelligence, which if you visit the website openai.com, you'll see that they've actually created these OpenAI modules which are playing video games from the Atari 2600 because they believe there's enough information in these video games to be able to interact with the real world eventually. Quite interesting. In 2014, statistical analysis for the financial industry said that artificial intelligence and robotics would be 419 million in the next five years, or currently, and it'd be five billion in the next, by 2020. That was in 2014. Whoops, they were wrong. 2016, in March, just a couple months ago, they announced it is going to be 83 billion for robots, 70 billion for artificial intelligence, totaling 53 billion dollars in the next five years. Okay. This, this, this is an amazing graph. This is created by Ray Kurzweil. And I think you'll know uh, Ray Kurzweil. He's a, uh, he's a futurist for Google. He has done some pretty amazing things in his time, and way ahead of his time. And what he's predicted, much like the Moore's Law about transistors doubling, is the computing power doubling. 90 years ago, we had our first MIP. That's a million instructions per second. Even that is unbelievable. But to think in the last 90 years, where are we? 1.2 MIPS per $1,000 every hour of advancements in our technology. There's a point where the computing capability of any technology will exceed, or the point when it reaches, the capability of the man of a human brain in the next 20, 15, 25 years, where we suddenly exponentially grow computing from that point forward. The next day you wake up, when we have a computer faster than a human, or the same uh, power as a human brain, the next day you wake up, it has already passed the human brain, it's exponentially. That means we can simulate realities. That means we can recreate this entire world and universe particle by particle and run it through simulations, which makes you wonder, how real is this? So how do we protect ourselves? And does anyone unravel the tinfoil hat let me put it back on? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Education. Of course, that's where my space is. That's where I spend a lot of my time. And I focus on making sure that people know how to drive. There's that analogy again. I want to ensure that the entire world, you, the janitors, the mechanics, the children, understand what's, what's coming, what's capable, and what to expect in their lifetime. So robotics is not just for nerds. There's many disciplines in robotics. And I use this analogy a lot about the automotive industry in the sense that if you were to imagine that you know, Michael Schumacher was a driver for Formula One, he was not also a mechanic. He did not fix cars. He did not make his own rubber compounds. He did not even fill the gasoline in his, in his uh, Formula One car. He was a race car driver. And the automotive industry at one time was you were an automotive, you're a mechanic, you knew everything about the thing. You're also the driver, everything. So in order for the robotics to become an evolved industry, it needs to split into many disciplines. And as you can see, and as you've been reading, there's many great disciplines you can choose from. So it's not just for nerds. You can pick and choose. Where do you want to live? So how close is close? When is this going to happen? Well, I could show you some great things that are happening in, in Google and in uh, Boston Dynamics, etc. So instead I decided, let's take a look at people, just like you. Let's throw up a mirror and look at the community and see how people and what they are creating to affect the, our future. I say peanut butter, I want you to turn to me, come to me, and say hello while waving your hand. Make sure you wave your hand. Peanut butter. Nine years old, he built that. That's Hunter. And it's built out of a garbage can. It's built using open source hardware, a bunch of different parts, but he's nine. And he's not an individual that you could expect to only run across you know, once in a lifetime. There's many hunters out there. Excuse me. Yes, miss, what can I get from you? How would you like to have one of these in your home? Yes, please, miss. Of course. It's built by Richard. He's a roofer. Using a 3D Here's printer. Wine, miss. Using the technology and a bunch of creativity from an open source project called InMove. 
he has created a butler in his home that serves his wife wine. <laughs> well, I have that robot now. He, he actually gave it to me. It's in my house. It's in my dining room. It's, it's, uh, it's my security system. <laughs> Do you want a robot you can interact with? How about a droid with object and facial recognition? Or can understand your voice and verbally respond? If so, then I am the droid you are looking for. That's Alan. Now some of you may meet another Alan from Easy Robot upstairs, but <laughs> it's not the same guy. And Alan was built by a Hollywood uh, special effects artist who deals with, uh, he's done a bunch of things, Pirates of the Caribbean, a bunch of stuff. And he just recently branched off and did a Kickstarter project and he created this. And it is a uh, open source project where it sits on your, your table and you essentially can talk to it and it's gonna help you uh, understand how to Google or understand weather and kind of like the Amazon Echo but it's connected to an artificial network, etc. Open source, uh, 3D printable as well. Three, plus four, plus four. What does that equal? Oh. Three plus four equals seven. Very good. Thanks, I'm getting smarter. <laughs> Yeah, he, he can do math. <laughs> I don't know what happens if it goes past 10. He doesn't have any feet. <laughs> Can't count his toes in case he got that. Um, that's built by Bob Houston. He's an he's a ex-firefighter, retired. He lives up in Grand Prairie. That's his garage, his workshop. Apparently, that's where he spends most of his time. And uh, his wife gets to see him about once a day. She's got to book appointments with him. That's his best friend. <laughs> so we have to understand that there is a world that we've created and that since the dawn of man, civilization has been doing nothing but working to be efficient and optimize what we know. We do that through technology. And we expect to grow and to make life better. And it has been great. We've made the wheel. We have done everything there is to get to the stage we're at now. But just like fossil fuel or any other commodity, we have to recognize that technology is at a point where we need to start worrying about what it's gonna look like in our future because it's not just worrying about the environment, worrying about social uh, issues with different countries, but it's also worrying about how we as a civilization still have the drive to exist when we no longer have to think for ourselves. And in 20 years from now, in 25 years from now, that's something we need to worry about. So you may ask yourself, how can we solve it? I don't know. We'll have to wait, I guess, closer to that stage. But until then, educate yourself and Keep up with everything that's there. When you see something in the news feed that says, hey, you know, that looks like science fiction, consider the implications it has on your life. Because it definitely is going to, it's going to change things. And I think it's going to be for the better. And with working with our children, I think it's going to work for our better as well, because I think they're going to do much better than we have. That's everything. Thank you.